in TV land, in TIN land, those who are viewing by the web, those who are viewing in their homes, welcome today to the outpouring. I feel as if I have not been here forever, but I guess it's just a couple of weeks. Last week we had um, Prophet Stevenson and prior to that we had John Wesley Berry. So I am back with you. And today I'm going to be starting a series. You know, I have never done like a series before. I've done like different topics. But today I'm going to be starting a series. And the name of this series is Secrets and Strategies. And I'm going to repeat that for you. It's Secrets and Strategies. Quite a few years ago, I had a vision. You know, while I was praying, I had a vision. And in the vision, there was this huge chessboard. And God was just moving different knobs, you know. So I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what is this, you know? And he said to me, strategic moves. And that, that really never left me because after that, he downloaded a strategic move that he wanted me to engage in. And... Uh, Recently, while I attended the Bible Marathon uh, all night prayer, I just heard in my spirit secrets and strategies. So between then and now I have been developing, you know, different stuff on the topic. So we are going to probably over the next couple of months, we're going to stick with this topic. We would have different people in and out of the program, but we're going to be dealing a lot with secrets and the strategies and from the time we say the word secret i am sure the first verse that comes to mind would be psalms 91 so we are going to be dealing with psalm 91 i'm going to read it uh, because the word of god is powerful quick and sharp but the emphasis will be on verse 1 and then we will look at a strategy that god used with gideon and there are many, many strategies. And then we're going to bring it home as to how we can apply this topic to our lives and our walk with God. Because the Bible and all the different accounts in the Bible is living examples that can guide us, teach us, and, you know, allow God to give us his own strategies for the present situations and circumstances that we might find ourselves in. So we are starting with Psalm 91. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no force can withstand. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from deadly pestilences. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His through his truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by day, nor of the pestilences that stalk in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High as you witness the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place, 
There shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. For he will give his angels especially charge over you to company and defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. They shall bear you up on their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and other the young lion and the serpent shall you trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness, trusts and relies on me knowing I will never forsake him, no, never. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So this was Psalm 91. And I'm going to reread verse 1 and verse 8 and then verse 14. Verse 1 says, he who dwells. And we see here dwells. And we know dwells is a place of living. It's a place of constantly abiding. So he who dwells in the secret place. So there is a secret place of the most high God. And once you make that your position or your place or your aim to dwell in the secret place of the most high, then listed right down shall be all the benefits of such a choice to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Verse, says, verse 8 sorry, says, Only a spectator shall you be yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High. So once we make the secret place of God our dwelling place, we will be inaccessible to all these um, wicked things we would see it with our eyes it may come near us because further down it says that even in 15 it says he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble so even though the trouble come dwelling in that secret place we are shield shielded we are guarded and we become spectators to the reward of the wicked Verse 14 also says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness, trusts and relies on me knowing I will never forsake him. No, never. And this verse is just so, so, so powerful. It says, because he has set his love upon me. And since we are required not just to have a, 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 a talking knowledge about God or, a, you know, something that somebody else says, but we are required to have our personal, personal knowledge of who who God is and to know God personally for ourselves. And one way that we know God personally for ourselves is as we go through different situations, circumstances, experiences, trials, tribulations, and we see God and we know God in all of these things. And this is, this is what comes as we dwell, as we make a conscious choice each day to just set aside not only the time that we have for our devotions, but as we walk, we walk with God. As we talk, we talk with God. We are on the corner waiting for transport. We're saying something to God. We're in the taxi. We're speaking in tongues. Something happened. We send up a high note of praise. You meet someone. You talk about the goodness of God because this life this Christian life, it's a living life. Every second of every minute of every day, even in your conscious, subconscious, and unconscious state, your, your, your dwelling with God, it must even be able to transfer even 
in your dream situation where you're dreaming something that, listen, this dream is not from God or, or it seems as if there is demonic interference in this dream. In that dream, in your unconscious state, you must be able to rebuke that and jump out of it. And these are some of the benefits of dwelling in that secret place constantly talking to God, being with God. I remember a couple, well, not a couple, but quite a few years ago, just around this time, I was in New York with my children and they were all going to school at that time. They had gone to spend their summer vacation with their father and it was time for them to come back. So I went up to meet them and we, because I worked with the airline, we were all on standby tickets and coming out of New York, at the end of the summer holidays when all the full pain passengers are traveling, it was, you know, it was really difficult. Anyway, we got to the airport. I listed my name and the kid's name on standby and we were waiting. But irregardless, irrespective of the situation or the circumstance that you may find yourself in, whatever are the natural laws and rules that apply, you can still pray and God could do divine intervention. And I remember praying about getting on and getting home with the children because they have school and all that. And I was standing on one side at the airport, you know, and in my spirit, the Lord just said to me, go and stand over on the next side. Now, it, it may seem weird because, you know, I'm standing there. But sometimes when we, when we don't even understand, as we pray, we just have to obey. And as I heard the voice say, go and stand over on that next side, I move. And as soon as I reach on the other side, I don't even think a full minute passed. My eyes made contact with the agent at the counter who I had given my names to. And uh, she just beckoned me to come as I went over. The flight wasn't even closed off as yet. She checked us all in, checked in our baggage. Normally the baggage would have to be on standby because we're traveling on standby. So if it's anything, we'd have to bump off the baggage. And she checked us all in, checked in the baggage. And a little while after that, she, her ship was finished and she went home. And that little, that little account was really a strategy. It was a strategy from God as he wanted to help me in my situation. So I entered into the secret place, prayed, spoke to him about my situation, and then he gave me the strategy for me to have the victory that I wanted to receive and the help that I needed. I'm going to now do a, an account for you, a reading from the book of Judges. And we all know about this account, but maybe we have not read it in quite a while or applied it to... to secrets and the strategy. So it's Judges chapter 7 and it says then Jerubabel that is Gideon and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Harod and the camp of Midian was north of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel boast about themselves against me, saying, My own hand has delivered me. So now proclaim in the ears of the men, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him turn back and depart from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the men returned, and 10,000 remained. So we see they started off with 32,000. When he gave the proclamation as God said to him to do, and he obeyed promptly, gave the proclamation, 22,000 left and 10,000 remained. And the Lord said to Gideon, the men are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them for you there. And he of whom I say to you, this man shall go with you, shall go with you. And he of whom I say to you, this man shall not go with you, shall not go. So he brought the men down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, 
and you realize that in, in obeying and in following and in dealing with the strategies of God, sometimes God would not give you the full strategy. He may just give you one line. And as you obey and follow the instructions of that one strategy, the balance of it begins to unfold. So he said to Gideon to do this. And so Gideon took the man down to the water. And as he engaged in that level of obedience, then God went on now with further instructions. So he brought the man down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps up the water with his tongue as a dog laps it, you shall set by himself. Likewise, everyone who bows down on his knees to drink. So again, God gave one instruction. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, was 300 men. But all of the rest of the people bowed down with their knees to drink water. And the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men who lapped, I will deliver you and give the Midianites into your hand. Let all the others return, every man to his home. So we see strategy after strategy after strategy and God giving them to Gideon one at a time. And what was beautiful about this, and it's something that happens even now as we would apply the strategies of God, it shows uh, the hearts of people and the readiness of some people. Those who bend down on their knees and were just drinking, they weren't, they weren't living ready. They, they, they weren't aware of their surroundings. They, they were not in a position for serious battle because they took their eyes away from being, you know, from that surveillance that once you go into war, you ought to be, you know, always surveying your area and surveying your surroundings. And they were just bending down, more conscious of their thirst, as opposed to drinking, but yet surveying the place. So Gideon ended up with 300 men. So the people took provisions and their trumpets in their hands, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man to his, house, his home, and returned and retained those 300 men. And the host of Midian was below him in the valley. That same night, the Lord said to Gideon, and we see here that there is constant conversation with the Lord and with Gideon. And this constant conversation can only happen as you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. That same night, the Lord said to Gideon, Arise, go down against their camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you fear to go down, go with Pura, your servant, down to the camp. And what is very interesting here is that God was aware that even though he gave Gideon the word, even though he brought it down to three men, that because Gideon was still human and Gideon had not fully experienced the power and the hand of God, he was a bit fearful and God made accommodations for that fear. And he said to him, and you shall hear what they say. And afterward, your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outpost of the camp of the armed men. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the sons of the east laying along the valley like locusts for multitude. And their camels were without number as the sand on the seashore for multitude. When Gideon arrived, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade. And he said, Behold, I dreamt a dream, and behold, a cake of barley to, tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it so that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent lay flat. And his comrade replied, This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, a man of Israel, into his hand God has given Midian and all the hosts. When Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its inter interpretation, he worshipped and returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given into your hand the host of Midian. So God is working 
with Midian to win this battle. And he's going from strategy to strategy, from strategy to strategy. He is also working with the fears that Gideon, you know, have because he's he not too sure all that is going to happen. And God has laid out everything for him. So what is very interesting in this, in this verse here after, you know, Gideon heard the interpretation, he heard the dream. It says that he worshipped and then he returned to camp. The worshipping is all part of that constantly dwelling in the secret place. He communicated with God. He received the strategies. He walked in obedience. And as the whole thing continued to unfold, we see where he worshipped God. So we continue. And it says here, and he divided the 300 men into three companies and he put into the hands of all of them trumpets and empty pitchers with torches inside the pitchers. Now imagine they're going to war <laughs> and what they have in their hand, <laughs> trumpets, pitchers and torches. And he said to them, look at me, then do likewise. When I come to the edge of their camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you blow the trumpet also on every side of all the camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch when the guards had just been changed. And they blew the trumpets and smashed, smashed the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies of a hundred people blew the trumpets and shattered the pitchers, holding the torches in their hands. And in their right hands, the trumpets to blow, leaving no chance to use swords. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and Gideon. They stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the Midianite army ran. They cried out and fled. When Gideon's men blew the 300 trumpets, and the Lord set every Midianite sword against his comrade and against all the army, and the army fled as far as Bethshitha towards Zerah, as far as the border of Abel Mihola by Tabath. And the men of Israel were called together out of Natale and Asher and all of Manasseh and they pursued Gideon. And as it closes off in that chapter, we see where Gideon won the battle. But the winning of the battle was not in the traditional way with swords and spears and all those weapons of warfare. The winning of the battle was based on strategies and the strategies came from Gideon's dwelling in that secret place, listening to the instructions of God, walking in obedience and taking them one by one and winning the war. Saints of God, we are living in the last days, whether we believe it or not, we see we are truly in perilous times. We are in very, very challenging times. The word of God says that in, you know, in the last day, the days won't shorten. Even the very elect will be deceived. Earthquakes, wars, delinquency, you name it, it's happening. And we need to constantly abide and dwell in the secret place of the Most High God so that God can give us the strategies for living the strategies to take us out of the trouble that we may find ourselves in. And some of this trouble is not trouble that we would have put ourselves in. Some of it will just be the wicked, evil, devious plans of the enemy. Because whether we like it or not, the saints of God are under attack. The battle has been intensified because the days are shorter. So I encourage you as I close off this program to 
Listen to the voice of God. Get the strategies to deal with your delinquent children. Get the strategies to deal with the problems that you may be experiencing on your job. Get new strategies for the work of the Lord in the church. Get strategies for dealing with people. And the only way these strategies are going to be downloaded to you is through you spending time in the secret place walking in the obedience if even God doesn't unfold the entire plan even though he says something to you that is so silly as go and stand on the other side or go down to the enemy's camp or wake up this morning and walk around your house whatever it is walk in obedience in Isaiah 11 as we close Jesus didn't respond by what he saw with his eyes or heard with his ears but his response to things was based on what he heard and what he saw his father do so as I close this program I'm going to pray for you and we are going to be continuing on secrets and on strategies so father I give you thanks for your word God I thank you God for the secret place in you father I thank you for strategies God that are going to help us in in this perilous days and times that we live in oh father god i pray for all those who may be viewing this program that are going through different situations and circumstances oh god even now begin to download into them the strategies and the wisdom for these situations that they're facing but as silly as some of the things may seem to them cause them to walk in that level of obedience and cause them to see your hand unfold and to win the victory oh father and god even as they win and as the strategies unfolding one by one and victory is coming out cause them to remember to stop and to worship father we give you thanks we give you praise we give you honor and we give you glory in the name of jesus saints viewers this has been the outpouring for your refreshing your uplifting and remember dwell in the secret place to receive your strategies for living may the peace of god continue to be with you amen Let the fire.